Hello students, it is my pleasure to have you all here today. So today we will start our topic. The topic of discussion today is momentum and impulse. You are welcome to our YouTube channel, Physics for Everybody. Today we'll be taking year 10 physics and we are going to be solving questions on momentum and impulse. But before we start solving the question, let us have a brief review of the topic. So we go through the topic briefly within 10 minutes, then we start solving the question. My name is Jima Adebowale. Welcome to Physics for Everybody. What is linear momentum? Linear momentum is represented with the symbol P. And what is it? It is the product of the mass and the speed of a body, okay? Mass multiplied by velocity, okay? And what is the SI unit of linear momentum? Remember, that the SI unit of mass is kilogram and the SI unit of speed is meters per second. Hence, the SI unit of linear momentum is kilogram meters per second. Now, we have to go briefly to impulse, okay? Because the word impulse and momentum, they go together. When we say impulse, what do we mean? Impulse is defined as the product of the resultant force acting on the body. The product of resultant force acting on the body and the time during which it acts, okay? So we have the symbol impulse equals to force times time. And what's the SI unit of impulse? The SI unit of impulse is, you know, the SI unit of force is Newton and the SI unit of time is second. Hence, the SI unit of impulse is Newton second. Now, what is the relationship between impulse and momentum? Impulse itself is the same thing as the change in linear momentum. Impulse is the change in linear momentum. Good. Impulse is the change in momentum. So we can have the symbol impulse equals to final momentum minus the initial momentum. That's the, that's the formula for calculating impulse. Final momentum minus initial momentum. And do not forget that momentum is mass times speed, okay? Hence, we can say impulse, okay, let me do that again. We can say, since um, impulse is a um, product of mass and momentum, mass and speed, rather, sorry, since um, Momentum is product of mass and speed. And you know, we have, um, we said impulse is um, final momentum and initial momentum. Let me put that again here. So, impulse is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. Hence, we say impulse equal to, what's final momentum? Since momentum is mass times speed, then final momentum will be mass times final speed, okay? Let's use the term velocity, okay? Because yeah, we are dealing with vector force, vector, yes, we are dealing with vectors here. Velocity is a vector quantity. So final momentum will be mass times final velocity minus the initial momentum will be mass times initial velocity. This is the formula for calculating the, the impulse that has been delivered to a body. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. Do not forget that since M is common in, in um, this expression, we can have M open bracket V minus U. This is exactly the formula for calculating impulse or for calculating the change in momentum. Where MV is the final momentum, MU is the initial momentum, and M multiplied by V minus U is the change in momentum. Do not forget that the direction of momentum is the same as the direction of the velocity. Good. So momentum, momentum is a vector quantity, just as um, as um, velocity is a vector quantity. Okay. So from this expression, 
what can we say about um, force? You know, impulse equals to change in momentum. If you divide impulse by time, okay, I'm talking about the expression we have here. Since impulse equals to m open bracket e minus u, if I divide impulse by time, I will have m, m open bracket v minus u also divided by time. And that will give me what? That will give me m times a. That will be mass times acceleration, where acceleration is v minus u over t. Okay, the change in speed with respect to time. V minus u over t gives you acceleration. So, uh, impulse divided by time, impulse divided by time is the same thing as mass times acceleration. And do not forget that mass times acceleration is equal to force. So from this, we have this expression that um, force equal to mass times acceleration. And that is the same thing as mass times change in velocity with respect to time. Okay, you know the change in velocity with respect to time is equal to acceleration. Yeah, change in velocity divided by change in time is acceleration. Okay, so from that we can say force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? Good. Yes, um, change in momentum with respect to time is equal to the net force acting on the body. Okay, so that is all we have talked about so far, and that is a brief um, explanation of the concept impulse and momentum. Yes. You know, um, since we said um, force is equal to impulse divided by time, if you put a denominator of one here and force multiply, we have impulse equals to force times time. So this is another formula we can use in solving questions on this topic, okay? Yes, so change in momentum is equal to the impulse, okay? Where impulse itself is force times time, according to the expression here. Impulse is equal to force times time. So that's it, and now we'll go straight to solving some questions on this. Question number one. In a crash test, a car of mass 1 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram collides with a wall and bounds and rebounds as in figure as in this figure here. The initial and final velocities of the car are V1, which is minus 15 meters per second, and V final, which is 2.6 meters per second, respectively. If collision lasts for 0 0.15 seconds, this is the time, 0 0.15 seconds, find the impulse derived. Find the impulse delivered to the car due to collision. What formula for impulse? Impulse equals to change in momentum. In this question, what's the mass? The mass is 1.5 times 10 to the power 3. And that's the same thing as saying 1,500 kilograms. What is the final velocity? The final velocity is 2.6 meters per second. Okay, that's one of the values given to us in the question. And what's the initial velocity? Initial velocity is minus 15 meters per second. Now we can calculate our impulse by saying impulse equal to, now we substitute the values into the, into the question. We substitute the values into the question. Let me erase this. Okay, so now let's go ahead with our solution. Um, impulse is mass times velocity. What's the impulse here? Impulse, impulse equal to mass. What's our mass? These are mass. 1.5 times 10. No, uh, we, we can use this instead. This is a more direct um, value. 1,500, that's our mass. Open bracket, open bracket, V. What's our V? V is 2.6 meters per second. So you have 2.6 here, 2.6. Minus, you put the minus here, 
you. What's our you? Our u is minus 15. So we put minus 15 here. Then you close the bracket. Close the bracket. In order for this statement to look mathematically acceptable, we can wrap this minus 15 in a bracket. So it looks more meaningful here. So now we have that our impulse equals to 1,500 open bracket. Now let's multiply. Minus, this bracket means multiplication. Minus multiplied by minus gives us plus. So we have 2.6. This minus times minus gives us plus. So you have plus, then you have our 15, and you close the bracket. Hence, our impulse equals to 1,500 open bracket. What's 2.6 plus 15? You have 17.6. So if you multiply 1,500 by 17.6, what, what will you get? Let's multiply 1,500 multiplied by 17.6. That gives us... That gives us 26,400. So you write that value here, 26,400. Yeah. So you write 26,400. Impulse. What's the sign of impulse? Impulse is more than Newton seconds. There's another part of the question. The second part of the question says, question B says, you have to find the size and direction of the average force exerted on the car. What are you calculating here? The average force. What's the formula for calculating force? The force equal to M open bracket V minus U over T. Yeah. You know, you can also say force is equal to impulse divided by time. If you divide impulse by time, you get force. So force is equal to, what's our impulse? Our impulse is 26,400 over, what's our time? The time is given to us in the question, okay? The question says, the collision lasts for 0 0.15 seconds. So you come here and put 0 0.15 as the denominator. Hence, we are going to get, now let's divide this by 0 0.15. This will give us 176,000 um, Newton. 176,000 Newton. That's the magnitude of the force. That's it. Easy. So that's the solution to the question. This is another question we can practice with. The values look similar, but the speeds are different. Yes, the speeds are different. No, this is the same question, so we are not solving this. Okay, now let's solve this. This is another question we can practice with. A child bounces a 10 gram super ball on the sidewalk. The velocity of the super ball changes from 10 meter per second downward to 10 meter per second upward. If the constant time, if the contact time with the sidewalk is 0 0.15 seconds, what is the magnitude of the force between the sidewalk and the super ball? What's the formula you use to calculate in force? Because the question requests for the magnitude of the force. What formula for calculating force? Force equals to mass times V minus U over T. Yes. That's change in momentum divided by time, okay? Now, let's write out our variables. Number one, we have the mass, okay? This gram shows that this is the mass. So, our mass is 100 grams. But we don't use gram. We use kilogram as the SI unit of mass, standard unit of mass. So, you convert gram to kilogram. That will be 100 divided by 1,000. That's how you convert from gram to kilogram you get 0 0.1 kilogram. What's our final velocity? Final velocity is 10 meters per second. What's our initial velocity? Initial velocity is minus 10 meters per second. What's the time, contact time? The contact time is 0 0.1 seconds. 
Why did I say the initial speed is minus 10 meters per second? Now, let us assume this is the ball. The ball falls to the ground. The question tells us that the ball falls to the ground with a speed of 10 meters per second. Okay. Now, when the ball hits the ground level, let this be our ground level. Okay. The grass, the sidewalk, the sidewalk. When the ball hits the ground, it bounces back upwards. At what speed? At the same speed of 10 meters per second. Take note of something. The direction is different. Here, the ball is traveling downwards. Okay. And after hitting the floor, the ball bounces upwards. Okay. In the opposite direction. Velocity is a vector quantity, hence direction matters, okay? Since when it is bouncing back, we take that as our final velocity, which is 10 meters per second. Therefore, the direction that is opposite to that, which is our initial velocity, will be taken as the minus sign. So we are giving minus sign to our initial velocity as minus 10, minus 10 meters per second. That is how this minus got here, as the initial velocity is minus 10. Now let us substitute what's our mass. Our mass is 0 0.1 kilogram, 0 0.1, open bracket. Then we have V. What is our V? V is 10 minus, minus U. What is our U? Our U is minus 10. So we put minus 10 in a bracket, close it. So you close the first bracket then, okay? Divided by our T, what's our time? Our time is 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Sorry, our time is not 0 0.15. Our time is 0 0.1 second. That's not five, that's a second. This I need of time. So our time is 0 0.1, time is 0 0.1 second. Let me erase this part of the question so that you can see what you are doing perfectly. So this is the question. Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead to solve the problem. The question requests for the force, right? And um, that's what we are doing. So the force equal to uh, mass is 0 0.1, open bracket, 10 minus, bracket means multiplication, Bracket minus multiplied by minus will give us a plus okay so you have plus the second term in the bracket close the bracket close the bracket all divided by 0 0.1 now we have um, our force is 0 0.1 open bracket 10 plus 10 is 20 divided by 0 0.1 0 0.1 times 20 divided by 0 0.1 that will give you 20 newton easy good that's how you solve these questions. The force is 20 Newton. Let us take another one. Now, the next one we'll be working on will be based on the law of conservation of linear momentum. Okay? Uh, now, the law of conservation of linear momentum, what does it state? The law of conservation of linear momentum states that in an isolated system of colliding objects, the total momentum before collision must be equal to total momentum after collision. What does that mean? According to the law of conservation of linear momentum, the total momentum before collision must be equal to total momentum after collision. What formula for momentum? Mass times speed, right? Good. So according to this um, statement, that means if you have two objects, Two objects, um, object, let's call this our object A, and let's call this our object B. So object A has a mass MA, and is traveling with an initial speed of UA. Also, object B has a mass MB, and is traveling with a, an initial speed of UB. In this case, what's the total momentum before collision? There will be momentum of A before collision plus momentum of B before collision. How do you get momentum of A? Momentum of A before collision is mass times initial speed of A. Why the momentum of B before collision will be 
mass of B times initial speed of B. That's how you calculate momentum. So according to that law of conservation of linear momentum, okay, you know, the law says an isolated system, isolated system, or you can call it a closed system. When I say isolated system, that means there is no external interference, no external force acts on the system, okay? Just only these two uh, objects that are going to collide against each other, okay? So when they collide, what happens? That's what this law states. That's total momentum before collision was because of the total momentum after collision. You can always say, you can also say the total momentum after collision equals the total momentum before collision. Okay? Good. Now, um, according to that law, you know, they have an um, initial velocity. Here we have the initial velocity is represented with VI1. But you know, I use U. A to represent this initial speed of A. Good. So in this um, material, they are using M1 to represent initial mass of object 1. According to this material, there are two objects of um, masses M1 and M2 and initial speed U1 and U2. So there are objects 1 and object 2. Object 1 has mass M1, object 2 has a mass M2. Object 1 has initial speed U1 while object 2 has an initial speed of u2. Okay, so before collision, the momentum of these two objects is m1 u1 plus m2 u2. That is the total momentum before collision, okay? You get momentum of A of um, object 1, you get the momentum of object 2, you add together. Now, after collision, what happened? The object 1 bounces back in this direction why the object 2 bounces back in the opposite direction, okay? So how do you get the momentum after collision? That will be momentum after collision would also be the product of the mass and final velocity. You know, after collision, the velocity we have is the final velocity. So that is what you do when you want to calculate the momentum after collision. So I'll write that here now. So after collision, the total momentum will be M1 V1 plus M2 V2 plus M2 V2. That's how you calculate the total momentum after collision. M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Also, in this example, you know, I was re representing um, the objects as object A and object B. So if you want to write the, the formula based on the law of conservation of linear momentum, you know, the total momentum before collision equals total momentum after collision. So here you'll be writing the total momentum before collision as MAUA plus MBUB equals to MAVA plus MBVB. So the A represents um, the object A, why the B represents the object B. Remember I said there were two objects, object A having a mass of MA and object B having a mass of MB. And these two objects travel towards each other and then they collide. That means they hit each other. So this is the formula according to the law of conservation of linear momentum. This is the formula you use to solve problems involving the law of conservation of linear momentum. Okay? Good. Um, yeah, and if you want to express this formula that way, you can write it as um, M1U1 plus M2U2 equals to M1V1 plus M2V2. So whether you write it as um, M1U1 or you write it as um, or you write it as MAUA plus MBVB. Whichever way you write it, you are correct. Just make sure you don't get confused while solving questions, okay? Now let us solve an example using this formula. The archer. What happens to the archer? An archer stands at rest on frictionless ice and fires a 0 0.5 kilogram arrow horizontally at 50 meters per second. The combined mass of archer and bow is 60 kilogram. 
With what velocity does the archer move across the ice after firing the arrow? Let's start with the masses we have. What's the mass of the arrow? Mass of the arrow is 0 0.5 kilogram, right? Good. Remember that initially the archer stands at rest. Okay, that means both the archer has an initial speed of zero. Also, the arrow has an initial speed of zero because initially the arrow was not moving. So we have an um, initial speed of arrow is zero meters per second. Now, mass of um, the bow and the archer will be 60 kilogram according to the question. And initial speed of the bow and archer would be zero meters per second because they stood at rest. What will be the final velocity? The final velocity of arrow is what? The final velocity of arrow is 50 meters per second. 50 meters per second. The question says, with what velocity does the archer move across the ice? That means, what's the final velocity of the bow and archer? That's the question. You remember the archer would be holding onto the bow after firing the arrow. That's why we are adding the mass of the bow and the mass of the archer together. Okay? And the question has given us that mass as 60 kilograms. Now, these values, let us substitute into the formula. What formula are we using? We are using the formula based on the law of conservation of linear momentum that MAUA plus MBUB equal to MAVA plus MBVB. What is MA? MA is 0 0.5 kilogram. So we have 0 0.5 multiplied by UA is 0. Plus MB, our MB is 60 kilogram, which you have 60 times UB, UB is zero, equal to what is our MA? Our MA is the mass of the um, arrow, which is um, 0 0.5 times VA. What's VA? VA is final speed of the arrow, which is 50 meters per second. Plus MB. What's MB? MB is um, 60 kilogram times VB. What's VB? VB is the unknown. So we just write VB here. Now let's substitute. 0 0.5 times 0 gives you 0. Plus, plus, 60 times 0 gives you 0. Equal to, equal to, 0 0.5 times 60. No, 0 0.5 times 50 will give you 25 plus 60 times VB, we give you 60 VB. From this, you have 0 plus 0 gives you 0. 0 equals to 25 plus 60 VB. From this, we can take 25 to the other side of this e equation. When you do that, what will you have? You have 0 minus 25 equals to 60 VB. Why? Because when 25 crosses the equality sign to the other side, it becomes minus 25. So 0 minus 25 gives us minus 25, okay, equals to 60 VB, VB. So if 60 VB, now if 60 VB equals to minus 25, how do you get VB? You divide both sides by 60 so that VB can stand alone, okay? Hence, we have our VB equals to Minus 25 divided by 60. Minus 25 divided by 60 equal to, let me take that again. Minus 25 divided by 60. Minus 25 divided by 60 gives us 0 0.42. Approximately 0 0.42. So we have. Zero. So we have zero point four two. What's the SI unit of VB? VB is speed, so the SI unit will be meters per second. That's good. So that's the same question again. 
So that is clear, that is understood. That is understood. Okay, we solved this question before. So there is no point dwelling on it. A 100 kilogram man. Okay, we've not solved this. Now let's solve this one. A 100 kilogram man and a 50 kilogram woman on ice skates stand facing each other. If the woman pushes the man backwards so that his final speed is one meters per second, at what speed does she recall? Now we are going to write out the values we have from this question. Okay. Um, you know, there are two there are two masses now. We have the woman that pushes against the man. So this is the man, a very gentle man. He is not um, pushing in return. But the woman that pushes him, the woman that pushes him, um, when she pushes him, he will move forward. But there will be an there will be a reaction that pushes her in the opposite direction. According to Newton's third law of motion, action and reaction they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay, or you say for every action there's an equal and oppositely acted reaction. So the action of pushing the man it, it causes her to move backward. That's called the what? That's called the recoil speed. There will, be a, there will be a recoil. There will be a force that pushes her backward in the opposite direction. Yeah. So we have the mass of the man, mass of the woman. Let's list out the variables we have. A 100 kilogram man, that means the mass of the man is 100 kilogram. Mass of the woman is 50 kilogram. Let's call the woman B. Mass of the woman is 50 kilogram. What about the initial speed? On ice skates, stand facing each other. That means, since they are standing, that means their initial speed would be zero meters per second. That's what it means to stand facing each other. That means they stood doing nothing. Okay, so initial speed of the, of the man is zero meters per second. Initial speed of the woman is zero meters per second. So after pushing the man, there will be a recall speed. If the woman pushes the man backwards so that his final speed is one meters per second now we have the final speed of the man as one meters per second so what's the real question the main question is at what speed does she recall so we are looking for the speed at which she bounces back the recall speed so we are looking for the recall speed of the woman that's the question so what you do, you state the law of conservation of linear momentum mathematically, which is um, MAUA plus uh, MBV, MBUB equals to MAVA plus MBVB. All right, let's go. So what you do next, um, MA is what? MA is 100 kilogram. UA is zero. Sorry. Yeah, UA is zero, initial speed of the man. Plus MB is weight mass of the woman, which is 50, times initial speed of the woman is zero, equal to MA is the mass of the man, which is 100 kilogram, times final speed of the man is one meter per second, plus MB is the mass of the woman, which is 50, times final speed of the woman is VB, which you do not know. Now let's multiply. 100 times 0 gives us 0 plus 5 times 50 times 0 gives us 0 equals to 100 times 1 gives us 100 plus 50 times VB gives us 50 VB. From this, we have that 0 is equal to 100 plus 50 VB. To find VB, what will you do? You move 100 to the other side. So you have 0 minus 100 equals to 50 VB. So if minus 100 is equal to 50 VB, how do you find VB? You divide both sides by 50. You have minus 2 equals to VB. Why? Because 50 will cancel out 50. You'll be left with VB on the left-hand side. That means the final speed of the, of the woman 
is minus 2 meters per second. What is the minus doing there? The minus just shows us that the direction of that speed will be in the opposite direction to the final speed of the man, which is 1 meters per second. So her own speed will be in opposite direction to the final speed of the man, okay? Minus 2 meters per second, okay? Ideally, the speed is 2 meters per second. The negative sign only shows direction. So if you have the options like this, you pick 2 meters per second because that is the magnitude of, the, of her speed. Now, let's talk about the two types of collision that can happen to an object, okay? An object can experience two types of collision. These are inelastic collision and elastic collision. When we say inelastic collision, what do we mean? We mean two objects, when they collide, after colliding, what happens? These two objects will move together as a single unit with a common final velocity. And this always happens when the momentum of one object is far higher than the momentum of the other object. Once they, once they collide or hit each other, both objects will move in the direction of the one with higher momentum. What determines the momentum? The product of the mass and speed. What do I mean by all of this? Let us consider... Let us consider a policeman putting on a life jacket. A policeman putting on a life jacket. And, uh, and then um, a criminal shoots a bullet at him. When the bullet hits the vest of the policeman, what happens? The bullet and the policeman will move together in this direction. Okay. Even if the policeman was initially running this way, if it is a big bullet, that's a big bullet that has a high mass and, um, and it travels at that high speed, the momentum of the bullet will be higher than the momentum of the man. Hence, it can push the man in, in this direction. Okay? So the, the both objects will move in the direction of the object with the higher momentum. That's what we mean by inelastic. But in the case of elastic collision, in the case of elastic, now I want to talk about elastic collision. When we say the collision between two objects is elastic, what does it mean? That means when these two objects, let me do the same example, um, this MA having initial speed UA, and this is MB having initial speed UB. After colliding, what happens? These two objects will not move together as a single unit, no. The Object MA will move with its own final speed VA, okay? While the object MB will move in the opposite direction with its own final speed VB. And that is what we illustrated with everything we have been working on so far. Everything we've been working on so far assumes that the collision is perfectly inelastic. That means the two colliding objects will move in opposite direction after collision. So, the example we've been taking so far is on elastic collision, okay? But as for inelastic, that is what I just want to introduce you to, the concept of um, inelastic collision. And whenever you have inelastic collision, what will you do? Whenever you have inelastic collision, you know the two objects are moving together with a, const with a common final speed. You know, when I said inelastic, when these two objects collide, Okay, after collision, this one is moving this way. Okay, let me start that again because this diagram is not neat at all. So this is the second object. This one is moving this way. This one is moving this way. But this one has um, this one has higher momentum. So when they collide, what happens? When they collide, the two objects, the one with higher momentum and the one with lower momentum, both of them will move in the same direction with the final speed v okay why because the final speed of a is equal to final speed of b so we just represent it with the symbol v and in the case of um, in the case of um, inelastic collision the equation for the for the 
for the conservation of linear momentum looks like this. The equation becomes MAUA plus MBUB equals to MAV plus MBV. The reason I'm not doing V and VB is because VA is equal to VB. That's why I just use the symbol V to represent both of them. Okay? But from this formula, you can see V is common on the right-hand side. Hence, if you decide to collect B, V, okay, which is common, we have MAUA plus MBUB equal to open bracket MA plus MB close bracket V. So this is the formula we use to solve questions involving inelastic collision. Look at this example. This is an example on inelastic collision. An SUV with mass 20 and 50 kilograms traveling eastward at around 20 meters per second. This is the initial speed of the SUV. While a compact car with mass, this mass of the car, MB, is traveling westward at minus 25 meters per second. This is the initial speed of the car. The cars collide head on, becoming entangled. What does it mean to become entangled? That means after they collide, they stick together as a single unit and move in one direction. Hence, we have just one final speed, not um, two speed VA and VB in opposite direction. No, the two objects move together as a single unit and travel in the same direction with a constant speed, with a constant final speed V. So in a situation like this, the equation of motion we'll be using will be the equation, the equation for solving this problem rather, will be the equation for, for inelastic collision. Okay, so um, the formula we'll be having will be MA UA plus MB UB is equal to open bracket MA plus MB close bracket V. Now, what is MA? MA is the mass of the SUV. Okay. An SUV of mass 250 kilograms. So MA is 250 kilograms. An initial speed of the car is 20 meters per second. What about MB? MB is the mass of the car. MB is equal to 150 kilograms. An initial speed of the car, UB, UA is 20 meters per second. UB, initial speed of the car, would be this initial speed of the car. You take note that the, the car is moving in opposite direction to the direction of the SUV. That's why we have this minus sign for the car. Final velocity. What's the final velocity of both of them? Unknown. That's the question we are trying to solve. Okay? Now let's substitute these values into this um, equation. MA is 250, so we have 250 times UA. UA is 20 plus MB. MB is 150 times UB. UB is minus 25 equals to MA is 250 plus MB is 150, close bracket, V is outside, almost by by V. What does that mean? 250 times 20 will give us 5,000, right? Good. Plus, 150 times 25, let me do that here, 150 times 25 gives me 3,750. So I write minus 3,750. Why? Because of the negative sign here. Minus multiplied by this plus here will give you minus. That's how you have minus here. Okay, you have to consider the negative sign in your calculation. Equal to, equal to, now what's inside the bracket? 250 plus 150. Add these two together, you get 400. Okay, that's what you have in the bracket. Must buy by V. 
Now let's do 5,000 minus, um, minus 3,750. 5,000 minus 3,750 will give us 1,250. Okay? So 1,250 equals to 400 V. You know, this simply, you can simply write this as 400 V equals to 1,250. To get V, we divide both sides by 400. So V equals to 1,250 divided by divided by 400. 1,250 divided by 400. This gives us 3.125. Uh, that would be 3.1. 3.125. We can approximate it as 3.13 meters per second. So since this is our speed, yeah, that's it. That's the final common speed. The second question says, find the change in the velocity of each car. How do you calculate the change in velocity of each car? We start with the change in velocity of, of A. Change in velocity of A. Which formula will you use for change in velocity? That will be final velocity minus initial velocity of A. Do not forget that final velocity of A is equal to final velocity of B. And we represented this with V, okay, because they are all equal which you got as 3.13 meters per second. Okay, so what you just do is 3.13 minus, what's the initial velocity of, um, of the car? The initial velocity of the car was 20 meters per second. So you minus 20 meters per second. When you minus 20 from 3.13, you get 16.87, sorry, you get minus 16.87 meters per second. Okay, now how do you calculate change of speed of the car? That will be final speed of the car minus initial speed of the car. Do not forget that the final speed of the car is, um, is still your V, which is 3.13. So we have 3.13 minus, what's the initial speed of the car? Minus 25 meters per second. That's what we were given in the question. Initial speed of the car is minus 25 meters per second. So we go by saying um, 3.13 minus times minus gives us um, plus. Minus multiplied by minus gives us plus. So we have plus 25. Add these two together, you get 28.13 meters per second. The top question says that you should calculate, calculate, find the change in kinetic energy of the system. And what will you do to get that? Kinetic energy is um, half mv squared. So you just see change in kinetic energy is in kinetic energy after collision minus kinetic energy before collision. How do you get kinetic energy after collision? You use um, half m1 plus m2, okay? Have open brackets m1 plus m2 multiplied by the final v speed v squared. That'll give the kinetic energy after collision. How do you get kinetic energy before collision? You do have. I'm sorry, I represented the object with a and b, ma plus mb. Yeah. So you have half ma ua squared plus half. MB UB squared. If you solve it, you get the answer correctly. So I want you to substitute and solve this. If you get a negative answer, that means you are correct. Okay. So this will be your own assignment. Solve this and um, yes, solve this and let's see how far you go with that. Thank you very much for listening. Do have a nice day. Goodbye.